and so we set our motivation to do whatever we possibly can to attain the peerless state of enlightenment, and knowing that in order to uh, attain that state, I must perfect all the trainings on the Bodhisattva path. Uh, to uh, perfect those trainings, I need to be able to hear <coughs> the teachings, I need to be able to understand what those teachings are, and I need to be able to gain that understanding based on a non-mistaken presentation. And so it is with this in mind that I am here this morning to listen to a talk on the <coughs> graduated path to enlightenment uh, set of teachings. <coughs> So maybe I'll, I'll uh, do a little introduction to uh, the Buddhist path in, in general since I see a few new people here and uh, rather than uh, start it might be a little inappropriate just to start exactly where we left off last time. No, <coughs> <laughs> yeah, not so good to hear about the hell rooms. Right, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we can say in, in general for all of us, you know, we all want happiness and we do not want suffering. Uh, but we must understand that uh, in order to attain happiness on the one hand, uh, we must uh, be able to uh, accumulate uh, certain causes that would bring that about and uh, generate the causes and conditions that are in accordance with the happiness that we seek. And likewise, to avoid the suffering that we do not want, we must be able to uh, isolate, focus <coughs> on those causes that cause that suffering and to eradicate them. Right. <coughs> So when we look at these these questions, which are really you know quite fundamental, this that uh, when we talk about. That which uh, the suffering which we do not desire, the, the happiness that we do desire, and, and talking about causes which rela in relation to them. Now, if we try to reach a point of uh, conclusion and clarity just in relation to this one life, uh, that's going to make it very, very difficult to, to come to any kind of really satisfactory uh, conclusion. So it really is necessary to really take in a much broader perspective of, uh, you know, previ a life previous to this one, a life previous to that one, and so on, uh, to get the context of when causes were accumulated and so on. So 
And so what's necessary here, of course, is not just to take into consideration that we have had uh, many previous lives uh, to this one, but also that there will be many lives in the future beyond this life itself as well. And that uh, we must not just simply be satisfied to accept this on the basis of the fact that the Buddha said so. Uh, that's not really good enough. We need to be able to establish uh, the veracity of this according to reason, based on reasoning. And so we need to come to some sort of, you know, a recognition based on reasoning that this is the case, this is the most likely uh, scenario. And uh, to uh, uh, feel that when we reach that conclusion that it can't be any other way. What 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 is that? That is not that is not that is and so what's the really very crucial to reaching any kind of uh, conclusion or uh, conviction with regard to these points is uh, what we refer to as uh, Buddhist science and the Buddhist view uh, in the kind of categories of the Buddhist teachings. <laughs> So this, uh, these uh, two kind of categories of Buddhist science and Buddhist view uh, are completed by the third uh, main category of uh, Buddhist teachings, and that's really where it comes into Buddhist practice, or what, what might be termed as Buddhist uh, religion. And that uh, that really, uh, that uh, third aspect is really for uh, Buddhist practitioners who have had a, a full uh, presentation of the path, who uh, understand uh, the layout of the, uh, the stages and so on of the path. However, for the previous two categories of Buddhist science and Buddhist view, it's not necessary uh, to be a, a Buddhist in order to uh, get uh, to gain benefit from studying them. In fact, it's not uh, necessary to have any uh, spiritual or religious inclination at all uh, in order to really uh, find them very, very beneficial. And so it's really encouraged that one should try to study in order to take whatever benefit one can from uh, these uh, categories of the Buddhist teachings. So, for example, example without uh, any kind of uh, uh, study around the questions of you know past and future lives, as uh, it's uh, we may have many questions with regard to uh, those particular uh, points but uh, we will not be able to uh, find uh, satisfactory answers. However, when we do study and uh, we do gain uh, knowledge with regard to the existence of past and future lives, uh, then uh, all our questions uh, will find answers. And and so that, uh, in, in, for example, in regards to the happiness and, and indeed the, the suffering uh, that we experience even in this life, uh, we will be able to uh, find out why it is so, why it is that we have these kinds of experiences. Because 
Ani kaya na sobat je lah tenar, ane dapat tu tunggu ni aja. So let's look into, for example, trying to establish uh, more certainty around previous uh, lives. And so there we can uh, look into even uh, the uh, topic of existence itself, uh, things which are existent. Um, and these can be split into uh, two major categories, um, uh, in fact three, but two that are relevant, uh, the, those which are permanent, uh, those which are uh, uh, impermanent are functioning objects. They come under those categories. And so when we look into that which is uh, the existence, which are functioning objects, uh, part of their definition is that they uh, are produced in dependence upon causes and conditions. And uh, this means that they have a substantial cause uh, that uh, they must be there in order for them to come about and then the cooperating conditions that facilitate uh, that cause. And so this is the situation for all uh, phenomena in, in if they fall under that category of things which are functioning objects or impermanent. Re Sugen and so in that context so if we establish that you know all of these functioning objects rely on or depend on uh, causes and conditions in order to bring them about now if we uh, take that uh, our notion and apply it to uh, how uh, we come about, how our body comes about, how our mind comes about. So if we look in terms of the body, it's reasonably simple to, uh, to really conclude that, yes, through the, the meeting of uh, father's sperm and mother's ovum, uh, then the physical uh, body uh, began and so developed and so on into who we are now. So that's fairly straightforward, that the substantial cause then would be that uh, sperm and ovum and uh, the cooperating conditions, of course, all the uh, nutrients and so on to grow that body. So that's, uh, that's, that's fine. However, when, when we look at how mind, how consciousness is established, uh, we can't use that same uh, model uh, because uh, mind is a, is a no, non-matter. It is a, not a physical uh, entity. And so you cannot posit a, a physical cause like sperm or egg uh, as a substantial cause for something which is a non-physical entity. That would be uh, illogical. And so therefore, we must try to establish um, some other substantial cause that, uh, that is the cause for uh, mind or consciousness. And so this is uh, posited in, in Buddhist uh, philosophy, uh, say for example, uh, here we are at this moment in, 
in a teaching center listening to a talk on Buddhism. Now, that awareness or that consciousness, uh, we can, uh, you know, we can trace it back in our own minds to like when we woke up this morning, for example, and became aware of being awake uh, this morning. So we're looking at what is known as like uh, the previous moments of consciousness as the substantial cause for the sub consequent, uh, subsequent moment of consciousness or the next moment of consciousness. And so when we look at that model and we go back uh, in time uh, from this morning when we awoke uh, through yesterday, through last year, through right back uh, to when we were uh, in our own mother's womb uh, as, a, as a growing entity with a, a consciousness. And so we can trace it right back to then. But when we go back to just before then, to the first moment of consciousness uh, in this life, and so uh, that is uh, equated in Buddhism as the moment of conception. And so there we have this uh, awareness, we have this consciousness, we have this mind, but uh, where was its um, substantial cause? And according to uh, the theory, it had to be a previous moment of consciousness to act as that substantial cause. And therefore, uh, we must go back to a previous life the last you know, moment of that previous life to uh, find that substantial cause for that first moment of consciousness, that conception in this new life. Now once you are able to establish uh, that, then you have established previous life, one previous life, and you just go back, that extrapolates back through a previous life before that, a previous life before that, and so on and so on and so on. So according to the Buddhist uh, texts, it speaks of uh, countless uh, rebirths since uh, beginningless time. ตะกินชุบะเนชิงอ่าคังกะเตตุคังกะจุเกนละเตเนยองเตกยอเดสึกตุอะเนรังเกตะกะจะเจอตะกิจิกะกะซอเตจะตะนิกิวะคันดิช
But uh, consciousness, being a non-physical uh, uh, material, uh, does is not uh, this does not disintegrate, does not be become non-existent. It continues on because there are no obstacles to its continuance, and so it <coughs> continues on into the next life, the next uh, body. And so, therefore, now we could focus on, so what kind of rebirth uh, could that be? And uh, what influences the kind of rebirth uh, that could be? So where will that consciousness go, in other words? And so this, of course, depends on what is known in Buddhism as, as karma, as the law of cause and effect, and uh, how that works. And so here, uh, we know that uh, we uh, karma is like uh, the actions that we engage in, uh, which lay down imprints uh, on our consciousness. And then when those imprints meet with the cooperative conditions, uh, they facilitate that cause or that imprint to ripen into uh, what's known as a result. And that uh, here uh, we have results that are happiness, results that are suffering for us. Uh, but you know, we must understand that they are, they are completely connected uh, to their respective causes. And that's why uh, they come about as a feeling of suffering or a feeling of happiness. So rather than uh, cry and wail about the suffering that we experience, uh, it's far more uh, useful uh, to really uh, understand, first of all, uh, that uh, once the cause has been created and the conditions have uh, come together, and then the result has no power not to come about. In other words, it will be inevitably have to experience uh, whatever it is, suffering or happiness, depending on that cause. And so for us, it's a very, very important to, uh, to concentrate on the causal side of, uh, of the karmic equation. Uh, not think about results, but work on the causes, because if we create uh, the right causes, then we will experience the uh, proper or uh, joyful, happy results. And that uh, this is where we must um, uh, concentrate. We must understand that there, there is this uh, inviolable connection between the causes that we create, the imprints that are laid down on our mind stream, uh, the cooperative conditions that then ripen those imprints into uh, those uh, specific uh, results. And so rather than uh, bemoan our misfortune or wail about our pain and suffering, uh, we need to really ensure that we are creating the kinds of causes uh, for the kinds of results that we really desire. So this, uh, this really boils down to the very uh, nub of, of, the, of the condition of our situation. You know, we, of course, want happiness and we don't want suffering, but we find on the one hand that we uh, don't have uh, the happiness that we desire and we are continuously beset by frustrations and, and, and suffering. And so we need to understand, like, why is that the case? You know, why, for example, even in the happiness that we experience, it's not uh, thoroughly satisfactory or it won't last for us, or even the happiness that we experience turns into uh, suffering as well. And that, uh, you know, why, why is that the case? And we must really concentrate on the fact that uh, the only thing that we can influence uh, about this is the cause, the causal side. And here, uh, you know, the suffering that we uh, experience is often because we fail to understand uh, the causes that bring about suffering and therefore don't do anything 
to get rid of them or avoid them or eradicate them. And on the other hand, we so much want happiness, but we fail to understand the causes that actually bring about happiness. And so therefore are always uh, bereft of that or never have enough of that uh, happiness. So it's a question of isolating uh, which causes I must work hard to, uh, to gather and which are those I must completely get rid of. <coughs> so now we know that we need these specific uh, causes to produce uh, the specific uh, happiness that we want and to eradicate the suffering and so on. So we must then look at, so what kind of situation are we in? What kind of situation are we kind of operating in uh, to try to, to do this? And so we really uh, are in what's known as uh, cyclic existence. And uh, cyclic existence is, uh, those uh, beings in cyclic existence like us are very heavily under the influence of the, the karmas that we spoke about and also the mental afflictions, the, the afflictive elements of our thinking and so on. And that, uh, and that also, uh, you know, this uh, reality of cyclic existence is referred to as, uh, as being in the nature of suffering. And so it's kind of like the whole uh, situation here is uh, you know, very likely to be one of, of suffering. And so we really have to uh, take that into account and we therefore need to have a closer look at uh, the different kinds of suffering uh, that are uh, present here in cyclic existence. And uh, Buddhism speaks of three main categories. The first is known as the suffering of suffering, which uh, can be simply explained as uh, the suffering of uh, mental or physical pain. And uh, th this is something we all are, are quite uh, familiar with and can easily uh, recognize. Even we can see this in animals uh, experience the suffering of suffering. The second category though is a lot more troublesome and uh, it's a bit more uh, profound and requires uh, some reasoning to really understand it. Uh, this is referred to as uh, the suffering of uh, change and that uh, the unfortunate uh, thing about the suffering of change is that uh, most uh, of the, the people in cyclic existence uh, actually don't see this as suffering at all. Uh, they actually see this as, uh, as happiness and work uh, constantly, 24-7, uh, putting in every ounce of effort they can in order to accumulate this kind of suffering. Uh, they uh, because they don't recognize it as suffering and so this is a kind of one of the great tragedies of, of being in psychic existence these kinds of, of errors and that uh, the uh, the third uh, 
type of suffering is it is more profound again and uh, this is referred to as pervasive uh, suffering and uh, basically it, it, uh, it concludes that uh, unless you are able to overcome uh, this uh, level of pervasive suffering uh, one will never be liberated from uh, suffering ま、ティンサブチェマタンワイマナ、ティンサブチェトンセントネサムロマタンワイマイナ、ムユゲ、エレディギイマテンワマトゥケティゲ。ムユゲディギイジュカリイメテ、ゴマトゥケ。エレト
uh, and do it that way. Others, it's watching a movie. For others, it's food. Uh, they, they want to get their happiness through food or in any way some, some, something tactile, some touch. And so in this way, uh, people in a way just kind of uh, engage in the art of constant self-deception uh, through really limiting uh, their interpretation of the world based on uh, just these sense reactions. And that uh, here, uh, it, uh, in fact, if you look into our own personal history with regard to this, you can see it actually it just tends to uh, lead to uh, more suffering, actually, and uh, doesn't get to real happiness at all. What that in this chamber, you know, and it was a missy the tola chamber, missy the tola. And so, if that's the way we are, if that's the way we want to operate, then it really is a waste of life. Missy the tola chamber. Because <laughs> Yes, and so that uh, we really, it's, it's really quite tragic in a way when you, you see you have like uh, those who have this human existence uh, but waste uh, that opportunity uh, through uh, simply being uh, unable or unwilling uh, to use uh, what is the most uh, profound and particular uh, feature of uh, the human life. Uh, in, and to, in, which is the uh, intelligence, and this, uh, uh, and, and you know, it's all beings have this consciousness, but the, the best uh, mode or best uh, body for that consciousness is the human uh, body, uh, because with that, that combination, when consciousness is within uh, that uh, being, uh, that uh, it we can uh, really uh, fulfill the full potential. Uh, of that consciousness by using uh, the human in intelligence and the ability to uh, to reason. And here we're talking about uh, valid reasoning uh, as opposed to mistaken reasoning, which, uh, of course, uh, you know, we often have had that in our lives, isn't it? We, uh, on a in a course of action, using mistaken reasoning and, uh, of course, uh, ending up uh, unsatisfied, frustrated and engaged and, and experiencing uh, suffering. Whereas uh, when we use valid reasoning, uh, we're more likely to uh, avoid the suffering element and to really experience more happiness. And so it's uh, here we must uh, really look into the, the invalid or incorrect uh, reasonings uh, that we may have become uh, kind of uh, infiltrated with or, uh, and, 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 and dominated by and to overcome them and eradicate them. And to understand that it is by establishing valid reasoning, using this uh, basis of this human body and this uh, human intelligence uh, to really uh, not only uh, avoid uh, suffering, establish happiness in the short term, but in fact uh, be able to establish a permanent happiness uh, for ourselves. <laughs> Because 
અને જે મારી પાસે ધેલા તેને અને જે અને છાતા કર લોકે અને અને છાતા કર લોકે ધેલા તેને લેસા નામ શેક તો પાછા શા અને ધેલા તેને કે છે અને જે બધું મેં નાસો પાછ નોંધી છે તા મજે નામ શેના જે તાજે મારી પાસે મેં વજે સો માતુ બા પાતો અને લેંગે બસ આય ફેજે જમ જમ માતુ મે છે તેને એમ બાય સા તા કે છે છે તે કસ ના ખોવે ચવા તાજે મારી બાદ મેવા સોબ તે સોવા એના દિલ તેને અને ન્યમો તો સુન કે મારે તે ન્યમો તો સો કે માતો ના દિલ તેને લે ન્યમા સવા યુગ મારે તે માયો તે અને કે વા ન્યમા લે યુગ મારે આ દિલ તેને તુંગે ના સોવા ન્યો હે યુગ મારે તા દિગ ગ અને અને તા દિગ ગ મેવા છાટ હોતો વા તે જ તા દી છે તો તા જે તા ન્યમને છે તે તા ના છે ન્યમને છે સ્ક છે તો વા And so the ability then to really cultivate this correct and valid reasoning in order to be able to conduct our lives in the correct way. And as we spoke earlier, the conducted means really establishing these uh, proper causes to concentrate on the causal side of karma, the causes that will, will lead to the kinds of results we want and to avoid the kinds of results like suffering that we don't want. And so when we talk about, you know, these uh, uh, causes to that uh, how are they established uh, on the mind stream? So here this is like the uh, karmic imprints. And so in, in say in terms of a negative cause, uh, it is first of all motivated by uh, an afflictive emotion. Uh, which is in general uh, we talk about the three poisonous attitudes of attachment aversion and ignorance and that uh, these um at the very heart of these is the biggest misunderstanding or or incorrect reasoning of all uh which is called the uh, ignorance of grasping at uh, 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 the existence of a self entity and that this is known as the very root of psychic existence itself so because of of that being as uh, is kind of like in, in embedded in our motivation um uh, that's it automatically uh, that the uh, notion of a uh, of a self established me uh, creates uh, attachment uh, to uh, what we want and aversion uh, to towards what we don't want and that then uh, creates karma and that then is laid down as imprints on our mind stream and that stays there on our mind stream until it meets with the cooperative conditions that kind of awaken that into a suffering <coughs> result and so this is a uh, where we must work we must work at that root of psychic existence and if we are able to cultivate uh, the wisdom which can really eradicate uh, this ignorance of uh, self grasping then uh, we Uh, will no longer uh, be motivated uh, by that uh, ignorance or no longer have a uh, an afflicted uh, motivation therefore we won't be laying down uh, the karmic imprints and therefore they won't uh, be awoken by uh, uh, the cooperative conditions and they won't uh, arise as suffering results and so this is the, the very key process uh, of the practitioner of uh, of buddhist uh, uh, dharma and so when we talk about that third category of this is what the, they have understood and this is how they set their life course uh, to uh, to bring this about to fulfill this that in the imagine sa moze kewa lian sa bar de ke ke ben ninga ne kare ta chua sa bar sa na chua de ta chua sa bar ta ke ben ninga ma ke wa yin na chua de yongu yo ma de den ze ke ben ninga de chua de ta chua sa de તે થાચ્યો સવારે સુ કન કે ઠીક કોય મા કો થાચ્યો સવારો થાચ્યો સવારે તા છવા દે થાચ્યો બે માસે કદી છવા યુંગો યમે તે નેવા મેગે છાતે યોરે નેવા મેગે છાતે તા છે છાતે તા તે કે શુવા જી કો નામ છે ગુ તે મુતુ નો ડોટે ગુ તે છે છાને મેવા છાગો યમર કો કે વાસ લેન ઠોકો યોરે તા કે વા દે અને તા કંડેશ લેન ગોર સા તા લે સંગે લે તે ને લે સંગો જે સાયો ને કે વા સંગો લેન તે લે નેવા સાવા દે કે વા નેવા લેન તે જી યોંગ તે યોરે <clears throat> and so this is the uh, you know the process of like as as we we get into uh, uh, to be born uh, it means to uh, die 
and that uh, yeah, this is the, the kind of another key uh, understanding within uh, Buddhism. And it's uh, you know this is something that we don't have to argue about or to question, isn't it? Like uh, uh, there has been no exceptions to this rule that anybody or anything that is born, uh, the only definite thing you can say about it or them is that they will uh, die. They're already decided. Uh, once you come into this world, definitely, uh, how you're going to go out, you're going to die. Now that's certain, but unfortunately, uh, when that's going to happen, when you're going to die, is completely uh, uh, uncertain, and we have no idea uh, when that is going to happen. Now when we do die, uh, then it's not a question of us completely finishing, uh, coming to a full stop and going out of existence. Uh, we carry on into the next uh, life. And uh, we carry on uh, how, what that life is going to be and uh, you know, what is the, the vessel uh, to carry our consciousness on depends on uh, the uh, karma that we have accumulated. And so that uh, you know, if we have a positive uh, karmic uh, imprints, that uh, ripen at that time of death, then there's a very good chance of uh, having a good rebirth or a fortunate rebirth, as it's called. But if we have the negative karmic imprints uh, that are ripening at that time, then we will have a, a negative uh, rebirth, a, a lower realm rebirth. What <laughs> Jumsemangu <laughs> And so therefore, you know, to really recap a little is that when we have had uh, the good fortune to be born uh, into this human uh, body, into this human life, uh, we really must understand that uh, it for the very particular purpose of using uh, the most distinctive feature that humans have, uh, and that is their intelligence and the intelligence to be able to uh, really avail of many different reasonings in order to really gain uh, an understanding of life, of reality, of our situation. And it's so important that we uh, focus on this and understand the kind of massive, incredible potential uh, that we have in using uh, this uh, intelligence uh, to be able to gain uh, the kind of understanding uh, that will uh, really stand us to in good stead. And to understand that if we fail to do this, then we are really only living a, a life, uh, you know, according to uh, sense uh, reactions and, uh, and that very coarse level of understanding, uh, a wasting of our time, a wasting of our life, and worst of all, a failure to be able to take the essence of this uh, human life. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So it's very much like, uh, you know, uh, a child in education, you know, that uh, this is their time, isn't it? When, you are, when, when their children are young, we want them to use that time uh, to be able to get a good education uh, that will, again, serve them well when they become uh, adults. But it's, uh, that's the time when they really need to concentrate and put the effort in and, uh, in order to really look after to, uh, f- their future. And so for us now, it's, a, it's really the time uh, to be able to look after uh, the causes uh, in, our, in our practice, uh, to be able to establish those causes that will bring about 
a definite happiness for us in, in the future. So we need to look after our future in that way now and look at the, the time that we have now is the time to really accumulate uh, these uh, beneficial causes. ま、たの、トワスケミドア。まだ、いや、ごさまたな、ミルテでタスワバレ。今日はまた、ちが、そうそう、今日はまた、あの、ちみ、ルテ、ヨアゲ、あの、ちみ、ソン。ちんばたん
Tava Jenny, and a Casataka Jaji Dane, and a Tosa Tibjan Javayina, and a Namshina, and a Sanje Rig the Sage, and a Ryan Sanje Kuma Top Two Rias, what did the chap? And so they, it's uh, regarded like uh, within the Buddhist uh, texts and the Buddhist philosophy that, you know, our consciousness, this consciousness that we have been talking about, has tremendous power, tremendous capacity, tremendous potential. And uh, in, uh, from the, the point of view of the Mahayana uh, texts, uh, they describe the fact that every living being has uh, what's known as uh, Buddha potential. Um, they, they ha that is the capacity uh, to be able to uh, attain uh, the state of enlightenment themselves, the state of a Buddha. And that uh, what's holding them back is that they, they cannot awaken this potential because it is masked uh, by uh, karmic uh, uh, affliction and obscuration. And so uh, this is the same for us, uh, that uh, we can't awaken our full potential because we are held back by the, the negativities and the obscurations that we ourselves have uh, co collected. And so part of the practice is that we must purify uh, these obscurations. Uh, we must engage in practices to, to really eradicate uh, and, and to get these kind of obscurations uh, out of our system and in that way then to open up uh, and awaken that uh, Buddha potential so that we uh, can realize that, oh yes, I too can attain the state of a Buddha, the state of enlightenment. ロレ。ロレ。デメサンジェタレテワ。アネタサンゲシバ。アネタレテワ。アネマンバサンゲバルキュワイ。タレテワチ。ワタンチャテワ。アンタ。ロユゴンデチャワイナタ。ロニドン
the attainment then of uh, Buddhahood becomes uh, the thing of uh, preeminent importance and uh, we set our life in order to be able to do that. But of course, it's not something that we can simply uh, happen, that will simply happen immediately or even very quickly. And so we have to take a, a gradual uh, approach uh, towards that and guarantee, first of all, that we will be able to uh, attain uh, the best basis, that is, uh, human uh, uh, rebirth, a human existence, in order to uh, be able to continue with our practice. And so uh, initially we have to guarantee that we can continuously attain uh, human lives, human rebirths. <laughs> <laughs> and so that, uh, you know, to be able to, to do that, to continuously attain uh, precious human uh, rebirths, it's not enough just to be able to pray, or oh, may I have a good rebirth next time, and do nothing else about it. You have to use uh, the body that you have now, the, the human existence that you have now, to lay down the causes and not uh, simply rely on uh, empty prayers. <laughs> And so if we do use uh, uh, the human uh, life that we have now and uh, use it well to lay down the correct causes and so on, uh, then even without any aspirational prayers, uh, we will be able to uh, attain uh, the desired result uh, automatically. It will have no uh, choice but to uh, uh, ripen uh, in that way and uh, as a kind of side effect. And this is why, uh, for example, the, the kind of text uh, that uh, we are dealing with here, the graduated path teachings, they describe uh, the path in, in, in the context of three kind of capacities. Uh, of being, a smaller capacity, a medium capacity, and a greater capacity being. And so taking into account uh, where individual practitioners might be and what they can uh, kind of aim for. And so uh, here uh, this is talked about the, the path for the uh, smaller capacity uh, person or smaller potential person. And, uh, but they are not uh, like, a, it's just not a, a separate path. It is re re referred to as the path in common with the being of smaller capacity because uh, they are all related to uh, in uh, eventually uh, taking on the, the path of greater capacity and the attainment of the state of enlightenment. But uh, for uh, in the beginning that uh, it's fine to uh, adopt the path in common with the being of smaller capacity. And so that uh, I just wanted to finish that uh, brief introduction for those who were perhaps new here today, uh, just to give you uh, an idea. And so then, uh, as we normally do, uh, for uh, the, uh, we visualize uh, the uh, our guru uh, on our crown. And we visualize all mother sentient beings all around us. And that uh, they include all of those who we consider as a friend, and those who we consider as enemy, those who are neutral to us, and all those in the six realms of existence that we visualize that they are all present.
And that uh, you know we are aware that uh, all of these sentient beings are like ourselves and uh, want uh, happiness uh, so much, uh, but are bereft of that happiness. Uh, they do not desire suffering at all, but are inundated uh, by that suffering. And so we generate uh, a sense of compassion and focusing on all the sentient beings all around, and then we really develop a, a sense of faith in the, in the figure of. Uh, the Manindra uh, Buddha on our crown and uh, recalling the wonderful qualities of a, of a Buddha, the Buddha's knowledge, the Buddha's uh, uh, loving kindness, the Buddha's uh, power and, and uh, enlightened activities, uh, any of the uh, enlightened qualities of a Buddha and that um, we uh, you know, develop a sense of uh, the faith, a pure faith in, in the Buddhas, uh, faith, manifest faith and the faith of uh, con <coughs> conviction in in this what what did this what did this go by shit did you what did this that didn't you that that was a gospel what did that to give it to me give it to me singing to go by shit they give it to me singing that said the wrong man or some you may have it ever you know and it was in a church you will tell it to your mother right so about some way over in there some about some other me up with your in a young church ever come to you about that church yet just in it get what you want to tell a pen or you get you ตาเกี่ยวกับชิมาเพนเจลเพนโตยอสุตตาจุนัตตาทบะทบะจุนัตทําใจจังบะติมาจุนัตทบะติมาจุนัตชิมาเพนเจลงวนดิฮะตามี
So that's, uh, yes, the objective of the smaller capacity practitioner uh, who is uh, less concentrated on just the stuff of this life but is uh, practicing uh, with a focus on a future life. And that future life, as we have said, can be a rebirth as a human being, which is very good, but also as a, 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 a celestial being uh, in the uh, desire realm. And uh, this means that they are... in. Uh, <coughs> beings that are um, really dominated by uh, their sense faculties. So uh, everything that uh, they touch, smell, taste, uh, see and hear may form uh, the bulk of their experience. And then beyond them then is, uh, are different other realms uh, that one can uh, be uh, born into uh, depending on the causes that are created. And uh, we have isolated the, f the, the particular uh, causes to uh, take rebirth as a human being or as a desire realm celestial being, uh, as the objectives of the smaller capacity uh, practitioner, are the avoidance of what are known as the ten non-virtues, the ethical conduct of avoiding those like not killing, not stealing and so on. And that uh, once, once we have those kind of virtues on our mind stream, they can act as the causes for that kind of rebirth. But to enter into the other uh, realms of existence, uh, specifically the, what are known as the form and the formless realms, uh, there is the specific cause relates to different kinds of concentration or the <coughs> development of a mental quiescence. And that, uh, that through the power of uh, that concentration, one is then takes a rebirth into a uh, form realm. And that uh, here, uh, there are kind of uh, in the form realm itself, they say there's 17 different levels of it. Uh, five, the upper five of which are known as uh, pure uh, realms, and the lower 12 as impure uh, realms. And that uh, generally the being who is uh, concentrating uh, in meditating in those realms has uh, a distaste for uh, the, uh, the kind of uh, uh, pleasure that. Uh, in the desire realm. So even human pleasures or those uh, celestial beings in the desire realm, those kinds of pleasures that they experience, not interesting for the, the being in the form realm. And, uh, and as they move up, that's the kind of one of the motivations for their um, becoming more subtle in their concentration because they become dissatisfied but with the kind of pleasure or bliss that they were experiencing previously and they have a desire to experience something uh, more special uh, de later on. And so they move up through uh, these kind of different realms in the, in the formless realms and, uh, and, in, uh, and even though they have uh, avoided what are known as the lower realms, uh, we must understand that uh, these are not uh, that really ultimately desirable uh, rebirths because they are still within uh, cyclic existence. And simply uh, because they are not in the lower realms, uh, they, these all are referred to uh, as uh, fortunate rebirths. And so it's like, it's like saying, see, a better than a lower realm rebirth, and, uh, uh, but still a, a long way from uh, liberation. But uh, the human uh, rebirth, of course, is uh, the one which, in which 
uh, we have the best chance of engaging in really uh, uh, effective spiritual practice, and so that's why uh, being a human being is very desirable. ตาจิตรุมตายุกันเกชุลุตาเปนะนังบาเรอันเจนเรตะกันฮินดูริกมจาวมังบุยอเรตะกันเนเซงเกจิกาโซเดตาคาเรอ่าคาซาเดเจก
and so yes, it's really a, a, a really a, a case of the cause and effect uh, scenario or presentation that uh, because if we lay down these kinds of causes and uh, they will lead to these specific kinds of results and uh, there is this uh, uh, relationship between uh, cause and effect and so yes if um, if those causes uh, laid down within the presentations of a particular tradition it's uh, it's reasonable to expect that uh, those results will come about will f reach fruition like that and so it's here uh, when we talk about studying and so on when we, we know what it is that we is in our syllabus it's really no more than this it's really knowing uh, what causes uh, I need to uh, to accumulate uh, for the kinds of results that I desire and to use our uh, human reasoning to the best of our ability uh, to be able to do, engage in that practice efficiently. And
so the main objective of the uh, smaller capacity being uh, as well as really working and practicing in order to gain a fortunate rebirth next life uh, or even above that uh, and with embedded in that is the uh, objective of uh, above all uh, avoiding uh, rebirth in what are known as the lower realms uh, because this would be absolutely disastrous that uh, it's uh, disastrous primarily because uh, it's very difficult to get out of the lower realms because we can't engage in any kind of meaningful spiritual practice and uh, that uh, let's say look at one uh, of the lower realms is the animal realm where this is something we can observe uh, for ourselves and to see how much a, of a, an animal's life is just uh, dominated uh, by uh, just trying to uh, survive you know even though you know that uh, it said that the sufferings related to the animal realm are the lightest of all the sufferings uh, in the lower realms yet uh, they uh, uh, suffer tremendously. Uh, many of them, most of animals live in deep in the oceans. Uh, that they are, uh, main suffering is that they are uh, characterized by this uh, benighted ignorance. Uh, that they, they can't uh, operate their reasoning ability. And that uh, they, uh, you know, have the capacity of this constant fear of, uh, of eating each other, of uh, larger animals attacking smaller ones, of many smaller beings gathering together and devouring a larger one. Uh, and uh, they, um, there's a sense of like uh, very difficult, no kind of uh, capacity to uh, even have a moment's peace in order to uh, somehow come up with some kind of a positive, virtuous, altruistic uh, notion because of this uh, complete lack of uh, intelligence you know one needs a certain amount of uh, of intelligence to be able to understand uh, what the cause of happiness is and uh, there uh, to, to really motivate to engage in in that and so here uh, even though animals on the other hand have other characteristics that are far superior uh, to humans such as their you know the dog's ability to to smell scent and so on and or animals with tremendous power, physical power, or agility, and so on. But they lack uh, that essential intelligence uh, to be able to even better uh, themselves. And so very difficult for them to lay down causes, for example, to be reborn again, even as a human being. And then we look at, say, uh, you know, uh, hungry spirit rebirth, another lower re uh, uh, rebirth. And that uh, they are dominated by by hunger and thirst uh, altogether. Uh, very very difficult uh, for them uh, to have any leisure, have any break uh, in which they can again uh, lay down the causes to get out of their uh, terrible disastrous uh, situation. And that uh, this is why a human being, you know, is like such a, a very uh, important uh, rebirth that we actually have uh, the. Uh, capacity to be able to control our destiny uh, because we have this capacity to analyze to think to use uh, reasoning and that uh, uh, we must understand that you know all of uh, at the same time uh, that we uh, all have uh, causes that are really latent uh, on our mind stream uh, that if they meet with the correct conditions uh, we can also end up in these lower realms as an animal, as a hungry spirit, or as a hell being. And that, uh, you know, it's, it's really, uh, it's not a very big step uh, to, uh, for the, the cause to be there, and then for uh, the ripening conditions and the cooperating conditions to come together to awaken that uh, causal, that substantial cause, and to, for that to send us into an animal or a hungry spirit or a hell existence and uh, that's something we need to avoid at all uh, costs and that uh, you know like if we're at the point of death and that uh, really feeling uh, tremendous cold uh, in in our system and and uh, really have a desire for some wouldn't it be lovely to be just warm and cozy uh, that could be the cooperative condition 
to awaken a substantial cause on our mind stream to send us into hot hells uh, or vice versa we are hot and we desperately need to be cooled uh, that could be the cooperative condition to awaken a substantial cause to send us into a cold um, hell and so that uh, we have to assume that we have these kinds of causes on our mind stream and uh, it's only a question of you know uh, breathing out and not breathing back in again uh, that would be enough uh, to awaken uh, those uh, causes to uh, send us into a lower rebirth birth. and so it's something uh, that we uh, must do something about and that uh, we, dis we must understand too that uh, this is how uh, you know all phenomena uh, arise uh, through cause and condition and that uh, here we need to eradicate the cause side of it, the causes that might lead us to a lower rebirth. And uh, just like uh, you're trying to grow a flower, and you you know you you uh, you have all the uh, cooperative conditions there, but you don't have a seed uh, for a flower, and you you, tr you try it yourself for and see how many times you won't uh, be able to produce a stalk or uh, a flower bloom because you don't have substantial cause. So. Even if all the great cooperative conditions are there without the substantial cause, uh, there won't be a result. Uh, and that's what we need to work at when we come to uh, avoiding uh, rebirth in the lower realms. ロワアネチガソレオタエンルボゴゴジョタンチゲテデゲトネエンギュトゥプデチョンティクトワギュトゥプデチチルチガチガソレミレミンドタエラソバロミンドネキタウトチジトスタトチャデラエテルヨバタ
개치지도 꿀룽기 에너코 카디 귤크도가 카디 귤크도가 꿀룽기 에너 디렉션 제인지기도 가 So these uh, ten non-virtues, the, the, the first three relate to physical actions and they are uh, to refrain from any kind of killing or stealing or sexual misconduct. And the, the next four are related to speech and they are kind of lying, uh, harsh speech, divisive speech and uh, idle gossip and avoiding of those. And then there are three related to the mental uh, actions of uh, they are, you know, covetousness, uh, malicious intent and wrong view and that uh, here uh, we need to really see the fault of these kinds of actions and restrain from engaging in them and uh, we must uh, engage in that with a uh, very uh, clear motivation because motivation is very important it really is that which directs uh, the uh, energy of the future of the of the subsequent action and so we can have a motivation uh, to attain enlightenment for the benefit of all sentient beings. And uh, if we engage in the action then with that motivation, it will lay down a cause uh, that would lead eventually to uh, that result, the attainment of enlightenment. And if we have the motivation to attain liberation from cyclic existences, we'll lay down a cause to attain that goal. And if we have uh, a motivation like that of the smaller capacity being to attain a fortunate rebirth as a human being or a celestial being that's that's where that cause will lead to that's where it will be directed uh, towards so uh, the motivation uh, is very very important but at least it should be uh, one of those uh, three motivations if our motivation is simply to uh, I will engage in this good action in order that everybody will like me or that everybody will respect me uh, that's simply uh, just a motivation for the benefit of this life uh, alone, and that doesn't count as spiritual practice at all. And so you know you can you can uh, see how there are many many people in this uh, world with uh, no uh, religious uh, inclination, and yet they they are good uh, good people. They engage in good actions and so on, but they don't uh, therefore have any uh, cause to care for their motivation of why they're doing uh, that good. So they really aren't engaging in a, a correct or in any kind of like. Uh, definable spiritual path at all. What 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 the what ニャホエニャワサナ。ワタニャンガミタワティゲティシェ。アネニャワソソトゥンヘティゲタサムタンチェネ。ワテネシェンワトゥ。アネディジェボテネニャウェトゥンヘティ。アネミセバ。ミテ
So therefore, like uh, when we talk about the <coughs> possibilities and the dangers of being reborn in the lower realms, it only stands to reason that we should know uh, what kind of sufferings are explained in these lower realms and that uh, to get a really good uh, look at them from our own side to really understand that this is something that is highly undesirable and therefore you know we have more proactive about really understanding that I must do something about these causes uh, not to uh, engage in creating new causes and to uh, purify confess and purify causes that may be on my mind stream that could lead there so it's kind of to develop this sense of cautionary tale around these sufferings. So, you know, we're looking at hell realms, for example. There are uh, eight different categories of, of hot hells, eight different categories of cold hells. There are uh, occasional hells. There are neighboring hells. And to gain a good knowledge of uh, the kinds of sufferings as described there in order to uh, build up a, a healthy respect for not uh, wanting them and to not be reborn there and so but to understand that uh, there's no doubt I have such causes on my mind stream and all it takes is to meet with the cooperative conditions for for them to start ripening and uh, and to send me into those lower realms and so therefore I must concentrate on uh, as well as restraining myself from uh, accumulating new causes I must purify confess and purify these old imprints that are still on my mind stream and that uh, uh, this is the time to do it and to really uh, not delay because if I wait uh, then the cooperative conditions uh, appear and that cause starts to ripen into its result and uh, that's too late there's nothing I can really do about that. The suffering will have to be experienced and have to go through until that karma is exhausted. And so it's extremely uh, important that I have a kind of a preemptive strike against these uh, causes on my mind stream. And uh, I have the, you know, it's in my hand, it's in my power to be able to do that. Because these uh, causes will uh, remain on uh, my mind stream. Uh, uh, unless I can uh, eradicate them through uh, confession and purification. And that, uh, that is uh, something that is uh, possible to do uh, rather than uh, waiting for that time where, you know, I through my uh, uh, afflictive emotions of craving, gra of, of attachment, aversion and ignorance, uh, I've laid down these negative imprints on my mind stream, uh, uh, they remain there. Uh, until uh, they are uh, awoken by craving, grasping an existence and then into uh, this fruition, uh, into a negative uh, rebirth. And so uh, mustn't allow it to get that far. Must now uh, begin the process of purification. So prior to the uh, arrival of this, uh, this craving, grasping and, and existence, these elements, these uh, links, uh, prior to them, uh, one must deal with the, uh, the causes 
uh, that might lead to lower realm rebirths and purify them, confess and purify them. It's much easier for us to deal with them uh, at that causal level. But once the process has started, once the, that cause has been activated, as it were, by craving, grasping, and existence, very diff difficult to uh, engage in any kind of eradication of the suffering there. Really, we uh, have to rely then just on our uh, thinking ability to in some way alleviate the, the suffering. Uh, we can't really uh, eradicate it uh, at that level. So prior to it being uh, activated, that, that substantial cause being activated, we need to actually nullify it. We need to, uh, you know, uh, to eradicate it. で、今井さんたんごで、今日は and so therefore, if you look at it in that way, it's like really primarily for the avoidance of future life suffering uh, that we engage in uh, the confession and purification practice now. Uh, because uh, the uh, life that we have now has already been activated by craving, grasping, and existence. Uh, we are in that life, and that uh, you know we are uh, suffering, but we need to. Uh, we are experiencing what we need to go through in this life, and so there's not a lot we can do uh, about what we're actually experiencing now. But uh, we can uh, really preempt uh, any kind of uh, suffering in the future by purifying it now. <laughs> And so the suffering uh, that we experience in this life, inevitably, uh, the best thing to do is to transform it into uh, a cause for our spiritual practice, to commandeer it uh, into our own spiritual practice and to kind of go, yes, uh, you know, uh, whatever, ex I take on the suffering that I'm experiencing now and uh, in order that uh, I even take on any future suffering uh, related to my own uh, consciousness, I may it ripen upon me now. Uh, I have the capacity to bear it now. I want to uh, bear it now. And that uh, using it as a spiritual practice, taking it on to the path. And, uh, and, you know, as we get better at that, we'll be able to even imagine the suffering of all sentient beings ripening upon us uh, now. And uh, I'll take it on instead of they having to experience it and uh, purifying in that way. And so in this way, uh, you're turning what, is, uh, what was a cause of suffering uh, into a cause for future happiness. Let's leave it there for today. What did it say? That can judge it because of the can judge it under some of the same and so then uh, to uh, really based on uh, what we have been thinking about what we have been discussing uh, we make uh, supplications to the guru uh, on our crowns and to the guru buddha on our crowns uh, uh, to such an extent that the guru responds by sending out the five colored nectar lights which uh, enter into our crowns and the crowns of all the mother sentient beings all around us as well and the, those uh, uh, five colored nectar lights with the, uh, the white light predominant purifying all negativities and obscurations uh, that we have accumulated since beginning this time in general 
and in particular uh, purifying uh, these kinds of negativities and causes that we have in our mind stream to be reborn in the in the lower realms and uh, we feel that uh, myself and all sentient beings have com completely purified uh, of those so that our body really transforms into pure clear light and that uh, you know uh, as a result of this then we are endowed with all the conducive conditions for uh, being able to uh, uh, engage in spiritual practice such as, as a long life and free of illness and uh, an ever increasing uh, understanding of the scriptural and realizational teachings of the Buddha and also then with the uh, five colored nectar lights coming again this time with the yellow gold light predominant uh, really you know bestowing on us the, the blessing uh, of uh, all the uh, qualities of an enlightened being uh, such that we can very readily establish the, those qualities in our own mind stream <laughs> So then we visualize that uh, at our own heart center is a, an eight petaled uh, upturned uh, lotus. Uh, on which sits a, 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 a moon and sun disk and mandala and that uh, uh, we engage in the process of inviting uh, the guru on our crown uh, to sit here uh, at our heart center and by reciting the uh, invitation uh, <coughs> verse uh, three times so glorious and precious root guru come take your lotus and moon seat placed here at my heart keep me safe in your kindness and bestow on me the attainments of your body speech and mind and so with the first recitation uh, the buddha guru begins the journey down through our crown through our central channel and uh, with the second arrives and with the third uh, recitation uh, we feel that uh, the buddha is now remaining stable and steadfast uh, there uh, until we attain a state of enlightenment and we rejoice in having uh, that uh, uh, protection of the guru at our at our heart center so then the uh, the eight petals uh, lotus the petals fold over and uh, enfold uh, the guru at our uh, heart center and at the top of that then that is sealed really by a, a semi vajra uh, half vajra and uh, and then around that uh, and then uh, circle the uh, the sanskrit vowels in a clockwise direction uh, the sanskrit consonants in an anti-clockwise direction and the mantra of dependent origination again in a clockwise direction mm -hmm. Kusunto so then uh, light uh, begins to uh, emanate from the guru at our heart center and it uh, permeates uh, throughout throughout every single cell uh, of our body and mind 
and the purifying uh, all of our uh, negativities and obscurations and all of our illness and uh, any kind of faults of body that we might have, uh, any, uh, any kind of fault of body, speech and mind that we may have and uh, really feel that we have, our body is completely pervaded by this uh, pure uh, enlightening light and that uh, we feel that we have this uh, protection of the Guru until we attain the state of enlightenment ourselves and how marvelous that is, how wonderful that is, and we rejoice. And then through the combination of our own more subtle wind as the, the substantial cause, together with the uh, body of the, the Guru Buddha uh, as the cooperative conditions, our own body transforms into the enlightened body of the Buddha. And then through the combination of our own more subtle mind as the substantial cause, together with the mind of the Guru Buddha as the cooperative conditions, our own mind transforms into the enlightened mind of a Buddha. And how wonderful now my own body, speech and mind are indivisible from the body, speech and mind of the Guru Buddha. And that uh, this uh, my aspiration to really uh, attain the state of enlightenment in order to benefit sentient beings is possible now. I have attained that a state of enlightenment. How wonderful, really wonderful. And from that arises a bliss at our heart center from which arises uh, emptiness and uh, we ab abide in the non-dual uh, bliss and emptiness. And this place that we are sitting in transforms into a pure realm. And then we as a as a as an enlightened Buddha uh, now send out from our own heart center uh, rays of light equal in number to all of the mother sentient beings all around in all the different realms, etc. And that as the light rays enter into their crowns, uh, they are again purified of all negativities and obscurations and spontaneously arise as, uh, as Buddhas. And again, in all of the places that they reside, that place as well is purified of all fault and transforms into a pure Buddha realm. And again, how marvelous that is, my aspiration to really uh, fulfill the purpose of all sentient beings is, is fulfilled today. How marvelous. And that uh, this is, uh, you know, I know this is like appears in this way, but uh, it does not exist in the way it appears. And I know that this is just uh, my imagination generating this now, but uh, I want to make this dedication so that it will become actually manifest uh, uh, properly re in reality as quickly as quickly as possible. And we do our Lamrim prayer. <coughs> From my two collections, vast as space that I have amassed from working with effort to this practice for a great length of time, may I become the chief leading Buddha for all those whose minds wisdomize, blinded by ignorance. Page 29. For even if I do not reach this state, may I be held in your love and compassion for all lives, my Jushri. May I find the best and complete grade at last of the teachings, and may I please all the Buddhas by my practice. Using skillful means drawn by the strong force of compassion, may I clear the darkness from the minds of all beings with the points of the path as I have discerned them. May I uphold with the teachings for a very long time. With my heart going out with great compassion in whatever direction the most precious teachings have not yet spread, 
but one thread have declined. May I reveal this treasure of happiness and aid. May the minds of those who wish for liberation be granted bounteous peace, and the Buddha's deeds be nourished for a long time, by even this great path to enlightenment completed, due to the wondrous virtuous conduct of the Buddhas and their children. May all human and non-human beings who eliminate adversity, create conducive conditions for practicing the excellent paths, never be parted in any of their lives from the purest path praised by the Buddhas. Whenever someone makes effort to act in accordance with tenfold Mahayana virtuous practices, may they always be assisted by the mighty ones, and may oceans of prosperity spread everywhere.